everybody back to the program now um, like once again like I said this will be the style of program with this black to black series that I'm doing I will be pushing the music I will have different music that I'll play from time to time but for right now that will be the standard uh, for this show music information getting right into it because here on the information man black to black series we are going to do one thing if we don't do anything else and that is, we are going to tell, we are going to tell the truth. <laughs> We're going to tell the truth. Tell the truth. Yeah. Tell the truth. So, here I am once again. Uh, I appreciate everybody that supported the last Black to Black series that I did about cars, uh, self-driven cars and how they can't read uh dark-skinned people, black people, melanated people. That is a big problem in the world as it stands. Let me go uh, right ahead and get right into this subject matter. This is going to be uh, a powerful piece right here because this is close to uh, where I've lived, where I have spent time, where I've had a lot of friends at Stanford University. They did a study uh, in terms of looking at open police, it's called the Open Police Project. Once again, the Open Police Project. They did a study to examine policing as it relates to traffic stops. We, uh, in, the, in the black community, we have long talked about harassment, mistreatment by police and how we are being profiled and what have you. Now, I interviewed a young lady that I went to college with who worked as a dispatcher in San Francisco for San Francisco Police. And she told me that they uh, routinely would turn off the machines in their car that would keep a tab on the racial makeup of how often they stop people of certain races. And she said that a lot of the police in that police department were turning off that uh, mechanism because they were being biased and did not want to be able to show how much they were truly uh, harassing certain groups of people, in this particular case, black people. 
So this is the black to black program. And like I said, um, we have to tell the truth. We have to uh, shame the devil, you know. The truth. Truth, baby. So what I want to do is go and in, get into this study. Now, this was a this was a study that was done over a long period of time. It's the once again, it's the open policing project, which is a collection of standardized data on vehicles and pedestrians that are stopped from law enforcement departments across the country. Now, this is very important. Uh, annually, 50,000 Americans are pulled over by police every day. Okay? This is a fact. This is a reality. It is something that uh, startles you. It's something that we've got to think about. Um, because I, I know I have been stopped by police for, you know, they stop you. if You know, when you're a black person, you get stopped just if you're not driving a nice car. Um, they'll stop you if they feel that you're suspicious looking or if you're in a neighborhood that you, they deem that you're not supposed to be in. It's just a lot of stuff uh, that goes on. I want to stop that right now. It's a lot of suspicious stuff that goes on with uh, policing in this country. Let me let, let me go further into this. So they took they did a study looking at law enforcement departments across the country, and they were they made they picked up and uh, uh, gathered information freely of that was freely available around the gathering over two hundred million recordings from dozens of states and local police departments. So they took over 200 million recordings from dozens of state and local police departments across the country. Now, Stanford University is a beautiful university. I've been there many times during my college years. I had a lot of uh, brothers that I knew that went to university there. I would hang out. I've gone to you know parties there. I've gone there for um, a variety of programs, educational programs that they give on. Um, I've gone there for, uh, I think at Stanford University, they have the biggest annual um, Indian powwow, Native American powwow that they give there uh, every year. So I've gone to Palo Alto. They call it, some people say Palo Alto. Some people say Stanford University. Some people simply say Stanford, California out here in the Bay Area. So it's a beautiful campus, um, very um, academically tough place. Um, I've been there, like I said. And it's a beautiful campus. But this is where the study is coming from. And like I said, they've gathered over 200 million recordings across police departments. The Stanford Open Policing Project are a, they're an interdisciplinary team of researchers, journalists at Stanford University. Okay, so they're committed to combining the academic rigors of statistics analysis with the exploratorial power of data and journalism so you've got journalists coming together young you know students in journalism you've got statistical data uh, so you've got a whole genre of different people uh, coming together to put this that put this study together let me give you some highlights some publications and highlights and by the way if you're curious about where am I getting this data from, once again, it's the Stanford Open Policy Project. You can go online and look it up for yourself if you want to do some fact checking, because I think it's important to think critically and always do your fact checking. And um, they covered a lot of the, on there. They have a little mini map and they're showing you exactly where they got a lot of their information from. It's all across the country. But let me go into publications here of the article. Now, this is the data. They're going to go in data and policing, which means a large scale analysis of racial disparities in police stops across the United States. That's an area that they looked at. Then they looked at this area. Police data suggest black and Hispanic drivers are searched more often than whites. So this is some of the highlights of what they were able to gather. Uh, I'm going to go over. Are traffic stops prone to racial bias? An attempt to find out traffic stops are prone to racial bias confronts a 
a, 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 a patchwork of data across the country. What they also did in this study that was very interesting is that, you know, oftentimes the police departments, they tout themselves as protecting and serving the community. But what this study pretty much shows in its data is that a lot of the policing that's going on is based on make, meeting quotas, getting people in jail, getting people in these private prisons or these state run prisons. Right. Um, there's big, big money in this because. Um, we incarcerate, I know in California, we incarcerate more people than any other state in the union, okay? Um, Texas, if I'm not mistaken, they incarcerate, they assassinate, they, uh, not assassinate, but they, well, you could damn near call it that, but they execute those that have the death penalty more than any other state more frequently. Right now, currently in California, we sort of are in a, we're twiddling around in a moratorium uh, where Focusing on whether to get rid of it, keep it, make guys lifers. So this is a very hot button political issue going on in California. It's, it's, it always has been. OK. Um, but we, we incarcerate a lot of people in California and a lot of blacks, Latinos. I, I see it all. I, mean, I work in the prison system, so I see it all. A lot of different groups. But there is a bias. I've been talking about this for a while. This study pretty much confirms a lot of things that black people, in particular people in general, have said across the board. There's something broken with this injustice system or no justice system that we have in this country. Now, the problem um, of uh, marginalizing people, the outcomes test for discrimination. So they looked at tests for discriminations. Uh, they introduced a new statistical test of discrimination, the threshold test that uh, migrates problems with traditional measures of bias. So they get into some heavy stuff here. Then they look at fast threshold tests for detecting discrimination. Let me see. Fast threshold tests for detecting discrimination is something around we, which is this. Let me, let me just read this part right here, folks. We developed, they say here, they developed a method for filtering threshold tests, that is to order of the a faster than pass approach in reducing consumption from hours of minutes. So they're, they basically um, use threshold tests to determine the rate of discrimination, how often, how frequent the bias is when it comes to black people in particular. Um, and on this, um, this document, they do have charts where they break down statistics. Now, what I'll do is I'll put some on the screen here so you can see some of the charts that they're working with. This is very powerful information uh, that we need to definitely get a grip on one way or another because this is very powerful and information is... No, that's true. Information is very important. So... It's very important to know what we're what we're uh, dealing with here, and uh, let me go ahead and um, play this for you. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Yes, subscribe, please. I really appreciate that if you could do that. Um, now, check this out. They've also found that since they've legalized marijuana that has had an impact in decreasing the number of arrests that you will find blacks and other groups getting arrested for marijuana. So that has done it, that has caused a dip, but then you have precincts or prejudices, understanding racial di uh, disparities in New York's New York city stop and fricks uh, policies. Now I talked about this before when it comes to stop and fricks, the bottom line is this It's very simple is that most of the, of the men in New York that were usually stopped and fricked by the police in New York were black men, okay? Who oftentimes were found with no guns and no drugs. However, most of the time, the people who had the drugs and the weapons were on the average white men. OK, but it was usually black men that were being harassed by this unlawful law. 
Now, with statistical informed rules, police departments can reduce police stops and mitigate racial disparities without sacrificing public safety. So this study also will talk about how they don't really need to racially profile people, harass people with the stop and fricks type of programs in order to keep people safe. They have the statistics in this, in this study um, that will bear that out. So this is a pretty comprehensive study. Combining, and check this out, combining police discrimination in the age of big data. The, uh, the growth of information about police activity, often new opportunities to improve the fairness and effectiveness of law enforcement. So this study is also getting in how, based on these numbers, on this data that they, they went through in the findings of this document, they, they gave solutions for decreasing crime, decreasing these sort of disparities. Now, I'm going over right now with you, I'm going over a little bit of a highlight. Then they get into an analysis, you know, a Nashville Police Department traffic stops practices. So they examine a particular city, Nashville, Tennessee Police Department uh, traffic stops practices in 2017, drawing on extension database records and provided by departments. So like I said, over they went over 200 uh, across this country, different departments getting data that was put, that was open to the public and uh, giving an analysis to that data, assessing that data. And like I said before, I am going to put some of the charts up so that you can see exactly what they were examining. And I thank you all once again for being here with Information Man Show. Thank you. I hope you like this. This is the new Black to Black series that I'm doing. I want to thank everybody out there that's been very supportive of the channel. Thank you for being here. Let me uh, right now go into oh this is very important inside a hundred million police traffic stops new evidence of racial bias the stanford research found that black and latino drivers were stopped more often than white drivers now i said that earlier i want to emphasize that that overall black men in particular latino men or we are being stopped more than anyone um but black men in particular they have always had a focus on us and let me not, I would not be honest with you if I would not say with all sure truth that policing in this country came out of slave patrols when they were looking to find slaves, black people that would escape from plantations and they would hire bounty hunters to try to capture them. And there were even some Native American tribes that engaged in this type of behavior and contribute such as your uh, Cherokee. Indians, okay? So they were involved, some tribes were involved in this, and out of that, that bounty hunting, that date, that David Crockett, that, you know, frontiersman type of uh, mentality that was going on, uh, developed the police, which we have today. That's the origins of it. So that's very important to, uh, to get that, to gravel, to understand that information, at least, if nothing else, and understand that information is power, this is why I do what I do. Information is power. Definitely is. Now, let me go ahead and move on into the findings of their study. Now, I'm going to break these things down. Now, the police, check this out. And, and, and a lot of us know this, this stuff already. If we have experienced it, we have family members that have experienced this mistreatment. The police pull over more than 50,000 drivers on a typical day, more than 20 million motorists every year. Yet the most common police interactions, the traffic stops are your most common police interaction, believe it or not, folks, has not been tr tracked, at least not in any systematic way. But this study that they did at Stanford University is the first time that they have systematically tracked the behavior in the stopping of police in this country. The Stanford Open Police Policing Project, a unique partnership between the Stanford Journalist Lab, Stanford um, uh, Journalist Students. Um, as I said before, this is a combination of many different disciplines, people who are into statistics, studies. They, they This was all put together. Now, now, the goal, this started back in 2015 with the goal to start changing 
the state and the policies. Okay, now the police project began requesting such data from states after state. Okay, to date, the project has collected, as I said earlier, 200 million records of traffic stops and search data from across the country. So from in 2015, they started this study, collecting this data to be able to analyze it, to assess it, to come up with the findings that they have here, which I am reading. Creating this resource has been marked by challenges. Some states don't collect demographics. Hmm, I wonder why. Okay, who police pull over? Okay, they don't collect this. Not every state collects this. States that do collect the information don't always release the data. Of course, they don't want to release the data. They don't want you to see what they're doing to people. Okay, even when states do provide the information, the way they track and then process the data varies widely across countries, counties, creating challenges for standardized information. This was a standardized uh, study that they did. Now, data from 21 states patrol agencies and 29 uh, municipalities, police department, metropolitan police departments conspire nearly 100 million traffic stops are sufficiently de detailed to facilitate regional re re realistic statistics analysis. The results the project has found significant, significant racial disparities in policing in American society. I wonder, I really wonder why. If this is, as if it's some kind of secret, you know what I mean, folks? It's not a secret. We've known this for quite some time that this has been going on, okay? These disparities can occur for many reasons. Differences in driving behavior to name one. <laughs> but in some cases, we find evidence that bias also plays a role. As if we, as black people in this society, have never figured that out, that one out. On this site, you can explore the results. Now, they do have the results of the study. And what I'll do is do my best by putting it on the screen where you can all look at the data. But once again, in the description of this video, I will leave the link to this particular study so that you can take the time of your of your of yourself to really thoroughly look through different pages, the different charts that they have in here, and what have you. So they went, they created some charts. Now let me just look, let me just break this down to you right here. You thought the steps to understand the data yourself and information on the new statistics. So they, along with, they give you the steps, they give you the data so that you can understand and go along and understand exactly what they're talking about. Statistic tests of discrimination developed as part of the project. See our technical papers for more details. So on the uh, site, there's an area where you can click into those technical details and you can get the information that you need most vitally to go deeper into their study. Now, they go on to say that they encourage us, the public, to dig into the data that they have left on this page. Towards the end, they will be releasing records to collect the analysis codes. We've been regularly updating the code. So, they are regularly updating the statistics. They are regularly updating any changes in the patterns of the bias as it relates to stopping motorists by the police. So they're always changing because that's what happens when you do these type of studies, you know, these empirical data studies, is that you have to change, you have to change them as things change in the community. Now, stop rates. Okay, in their... Um, and I'm going to put this some of this stuff on the screen for you to see. Uh, their stop rates. They say here they started by and not by by analyz, analyzing them. Excuse me, folks. They started by analyzing the rates at which police stop motorists in locations across the country, relative relatively 
relative to the driving age population in those areas. The data shows that officers generally stop black drivers at higher rates than white drivers and stop Hispanic drivers at similar or lower rates. Then whites. These broad patterns persist after controlling for controlling for the driver's age and gender. Folks, this is truth. Tell the truth. Okay? That is what's happening here. That is what's happening. <laughs> and uh, this is crazy. <laughs> Okay, let's get back into it. Let's get right back into it. Uh, it's very important. Uh, these analysis, what we're doing here, it's very. Mm. Now, let's get back to black to black with information man. Okay, thank you for that again. Let me go into it. Now, they were examining stop rates, folks. How often the police are actually stopping people of different races, okay? Now, it is a natural starting point. They say this is a natural starting point to go with stop rates. To point, but... They also say that they can, it can be hard to interpret. Even it, so they're saying that even though they started with stop rates, meaning how frequent police are stopping people overall, and then looking at the race of people, they said it can be difficult in this type of studies to interpret the data. For example, they go here and they go on to say, for example, driving behavior, time spent on the road, lightly drifted by race, your ethnic background, the racial composition of the local population also may not be representative of those who drive through an area, especially when dealing with stops on highways. You know, and I think that's, that is true because I know as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a black person, I don't particularly feel comfortable driving across. This is a damn shame, but I don't particularly feel comfortable driving across America um, because there are places in this country where, uh, as a black person, you just can't drive through because there's areas where police have been known to harass us. And it's, it's almost like the Green Book. And, you know, the green history of the Green Book is that black people... Had to had to take roads and drive to areas and sleep in areas and go to gas stations and get food in areas that were friendly to black people. So they came up with this book called the Green Book that was a guide to let black people have safe passage driving up and down this country, places that they can sleep, eat, and be treated with decency. Now that's what America is was built on, folks. So this stuff is still relevant today about when we get on the road. Now let me look at another important. Uh, aspect of this and let me give everybody out there a much needed clap who's here supporting me thank you everybody okay back to the program now so this is after the stops. This is what happens after the stops. After according, uh, uh, accounting for age, after accounting for age, gender, and location, we found that officers ticket search and arrest black and Hispanic drivers more often than whites. For example, when pulling over for speeding, black drivers are 20% more likely can you believe that? <laughs> More light to get a ticket. 
goddamn right. We're going to get a ticket rather than a warning. Goddamn right, that's true. That's true, that's true, that's true. There's no doubt about it. And my mind is true. That's true. I'm going to hit it again. That's the truth. truth. Okay. Now, so we're more likely to get ticketed than we are to be warned. Then white drivers and Hispanic drivers are 30% more likely to be ticketed than white drivers. Okay. That's the Hispanic. Now, blacks and Hispanic motorists are about twice as likely to be searched compared to their white counterparts or white drivers. Interesting, 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 interesting. It's just, um, you know, information is so powerful. Information is power. Okay. Let's move it on. Now, these patterns illustrated the disparity impact of policing on minority communities. However, as with stop rates, mm, 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 mm. these disparities may not be due to bias. In nearly every jurisdiction, stopped black and Hispanics. They stopped blacks and Hispanics. Drivers are searched more often than whites. Hmm, that's true. But if minorities also happen to carry contraband at higher rates, these higher search rates may stem from appropriate police work, hmm, disentanglement, discrimination from effective policing is challenging and requires... more studies and statistics and analysis. So let me, Hispanic drivers are searched more often than whites, but if minorities also happen to carry contraband at higher rates, then higher, then higher rates, then higher search rates may stem from appropriate policing work according to what they've gathered. Let me move this on down. Going beyond disparities, going beyond disparities, testing for discrimination, search decisions, mm, mm, mm. the outcome test. In 1950, Nobel Prize winning economist Gary Becker proposed a method to test for bias in search of decisions, the outcome test. Becker's Propose looking at search outcomes. If an officer don't discriminate, does not discriminate, he argued they should find contraband like illegal drugs or weapons or on search for weapons on search minorities at the same rate as on search whites. So let me say that again. This guy, Becker, who won the Nobel Peace Prize, says that he argues that they should find contraband, okay? If officers do not discriminate, he argues they should find contraband, like illegal drugs, weapons, on search minorities at the same rate as on search whites. If search of minorities turn up contraband at lower rates than search of whites, the outcome test suggests officers are applying a double standard searching for minorities on the basis of less evidence. And, you know, that's actually true. Let's say, let's say they stop us and they're looking for you to have something else. Let's say they stop you. They think you stole the car, but then they realize, OK, the car is yours. You purchased the car. It's registered under your name. Next thing you know. They may double down some more and try to see if they can find something on you like drugs. These things happen. They don't find one thing. Now they want to jump to another thing. This stuff goes on in American society. And it goes on quite a bit. Quite a bit. Information is power. You are listening to Black to Black. It goes on. 
frequently in our data, in their data, the success rate of search or the hit rate, as they state, is generally lower for Hispanic drivers compared to whites. So the outcome test indicates that Hispanics face discrimination for black drivers. Uh-oh. For black drivers, search hit rates are typically in line with those of white drivers, indicating as absence of discrimination, according to their study. But we know as black people what really goes down in it when we're out there driving around in our cars. The hit rates can be misleading. Uh-oh. Becker outcome test is compelling measures and discrimination, but it also mm, it's imperfect. Okay, nothing is a perfect method. It's an imperfect biometric of bias. The test can fail to detect discrimination when it's there and can be indicated as discrimination when it's not there, as we, as they, and other researchers have observed. Like I said, you got researchers involved in this testing. You got people that are journalists, people that are statistics experts that were looking at these realities. Now, for example, it says police officers have small universal types of div uh, drivers. They stop. In fact, suppose there are just two types of white drivers. Some of the white drivers have a 5% likelihood of carrying contraband. And the others have 75% chance of carrying contraband. Suppose there are also just two types of drivers. Some black drivers have a 5% chance of carrying contraband. And the others have 50% chance of carrying contraband. Hear the words coming out of my mouth, folks. In a hypothetical world, consider a fall fair price, fair police officer. Now, let me just say this again because I made a little bit of a boo-boo there. In this hypothetical, hypothetical world, consider a fair police officer who only searched drivers with at least a 10% chance of carrying something illegal regardless of race in that situation the white hit rate would be 75 percent folks and the black hit rate mm, 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 would be 50 percent the officer used the same standard to search each driver Bear with me here. And so did not discriminate even though the hit rate differed. Differed. Folks. This is the stuff that's really going on in our world. You are listening to Information Matter. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Thank you. Let's move on. You got threshold test. Before I go on with the rest of this, uh, let me just tell everybody out there, thank you again for following the channel, being part of what I'm doing here. Uh, it's kind of difficult to look at these materials because it, it confirms everything that we've been saying. Now, they can do all the statistics they want, and statistics are great because it kind of backs up empirically what we all have been saying. But whether these statistics came out or not, whether did this study or not, we as a people know what's going on. And we got to speak out about it. Uh, we're all at risk. When I go outside my door, get in my car, I'm at risk. You're at risk. I'm at risk. It's a damn shame. <laughs> to black, black 
to black. Black to black. Black to black. Black to black. Woo! Let's get back to black to black with information man. Yes, let's get back to the program. I really appreciate everybody being here again. Now, let's get back to Black to Black with Information Man. Yes. So, let's get back to the area that I wanted to address as we get close to a conclusion of this presentation is the threshold test. To address the shortcomings of the outcome test. This is very important. Outcome test. We built on Becker's ideas to develop a more robust statistical measure of discrimination. The threshold test, the threshold test combines information on both search rates and hit rates and lets us directly infer the standards, infer the standards of evidence. Officers require before carrying out a search in the example above that was given before that I read. The threshold test tells us that the same 10% standard is applied to all drivers indicating no bias. Now, when you look at the statistics, it'll say here, see our technical paper for more information on how the test works. So once again, you definitely, let me just go back here and give you the name of this again. This is the Stanford Open Policing Project. You put that in your search engine, you, this, this document will come up. You can go deeper into this study. I'm giving you some highlighted, I'm giving you some summary of what their findings are. But if you go on this, you can go deeper into what they're talking about in Lay it, it's all laid out for you. I will put this in the description of the video. I need everyone out there to share this video as it is very, very important. So let me move on into findings. Stroll right on back down to where I was last at. Okay. Now, this is very important, folks, and I thank everybody for being here. When we apply the threshold test to our traffic stop data, according to what they did, they found that police require less suspicion to search black and Hispanic drivers than whites. This is what we've been talking about for years in the black, in the black community, has been talking about this for years, that black men get stopped a lot of times for nothing. They're saying the threshold for a police officer to stop a black pedestrian or black person in the streets is a lower threshold. You don't have to be doing much for them to stop you. And we've always have been talking about this. Okay, let me say this again. When, we, when they applied the threshold test to the traffic stop data, they found that police required less suspicion to search black and Hispanic drivers, black drivers than whites. This double standard is evidence of discrimination. As with all statistic tests of bias, their threshold test has limits. Everything has limits, folks. For example, let me give you a couple examples here. It's, it's officers suspect more serious crime activity when searching blacks and Hispanic drivers compared to whites then lower search thresholds for these groups may be the result of non-discrimination factors. 
our results are just one step in understanding the complexities of police interaction. Now, we as black people, we know what it is because we've been living with this all of our lives. All of us have children that we have to tell our kids. It's a damn shame that we have to tell our kids when they get in a car, if they ever get stopped, put your hands right here, do this, don't do that. We're always living in a hyphen, uh, in hyphen anxiety. This brings upon anxiety um, and it's not good for our mental health. But these are the realities that's, that we have to deal with when we walk out into the world. It's just that's the facts. Now, let me uh, go on and say this. This is very important, too. Marijuana. I talked about the legalization of marijuana. The effects of legalizing recreational marijuana use. Several states have recently legalized the use of recreational marijuana. We have detailed data in two of these states, Colorado and Washington State. As everyone knows, those are the two states where it's legalized completely. Okay? Now, after marijuana use use was legalized, Colorado and Washington saw a dramatic drop in search rates. So basically, in a nutshell, in the states where they legalized marijuana, it has actually made a dip in police officers searching people uh, has gone down because it's legalized. Now it's no longer, you don't no longer can harass people who have marijuana, for example. Now, um, now let me just say that. The, the rates dramatically dropped in the, in the search rates. So the, the, they, they saw in Colorado and Washington, I must repeat this, Colorado and Washington, where marijuana is legal, they saw a dramatic drop in the way officers search people. It's gone down. That's because many searches are drug-related. Take away marijuana as a crime and search goes down. In both states, we searched after a rest and other searchers are conducted as mm, interesting in matters regarding of suspicion of drug possession. So they're searching. So they're not searching. So, so because marijuana is legalized, it's made a dip in, in finding that drug on your people's person because it's legal now. So it's caused them to go to another area of trying to focus on people when they come in. So, like I said, I'm going to do my best to show the statistics, put them on the screen so that you can see some of the things that I've been able to gather uh, here. And I'm going to end right there. Like I said, this is the Stanford. Let me click into news. Let me hit click it here. So let me go into more. The police search dropped dramatically in states that legalized marijuana. I said that. Here go another summary. Measuring racial bias in police forces. Why legal pot could dramatically cut state police vehicle search. Interesting. How to cut down on searches in traffic stops. Legalized pot. New data shows that legalized pot leads to fewer encounters between the cops and the drivers. Interesting. Police officers are more likely to cite black and Latino drivers than white uh, whites during traffic stops. These are, I'm just summarizing what I've gone through, um, and I, black and Latin drivers are searched based on less evidence and are more likely to be arrested. Mm, Stanford researchers found, found, found this to be the truth. Stanford study finds bias in police search, okay? Black and Latino drivers more likely to be cited and arrested than white drivers during traffic stops, okay? I'm re-emphasizing this. New database allows the Stanford researchers to find disparities in officers and in treat, in treatment of minority motorists. So that is what I wanted to say to you folks. I really thank you all for being here, for allowing me to lay a little bit of this on you. I had to read it. I had to break it down a little bit. Uh, it's very wordy stuff. But like I said, I will put the description in the video with this link to this page so that you can go into their their, their, their database. They did have quite a few pot, uh, charts that I want to put on some. I'm going to put some on the screen, as you can see, uh, so that you can examine some of the things that I'm talking about, some of the things in the study. I want to thank everybody for being here.
And most important thing is make sure you subscribe to the channel. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Thank you. I want to thank you for being here to the Black to Black channel. I had to put this together and present this to the family because I think this is very important for us to get a grip on, to understand. A lot of us do understand, but it's reinforced. When you have these studies, it reinforces everything that we've been talking about. I really appreciate everybody that's here. <laughs> everybody black to black black to black Y'all like this one too. Information Man Show. <laughs> this stuff is powerful. Woo. You are listening to Black to Black. everybody for being here. This is the Black to Black series with Information Man. I hope you like what I'm doing here with this. Thank you, everybody. All the music is uh, stuff that I worked on, stuff that I produced and put together. Peace. I want to give a shout out to the Black Brain Trust out there. Check out the Black Brain Trust and a uh, Prophet of Thought series. Check him out. Peace to old Shea Duke Jackson out there. Peace to George Makem. Brother Art. Peace to Moses Jenkins. Peace to Black Ram. I see you out there, Black Ram. Love you, brother. Peace, 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 peace. And peace to everybody in the chat room. Thank you for being here. Listen, make sure you check out this data in the description of the video. This is Information Man. Black to black. Black to black. Woo! <laughs> Trying to have a little fun here with y'all. Woo! Inside a hundred million police traffic stops, new evidence of racial bias. That's what's been going on. Da, 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 da.
da, da. This is a black to black to black black. Thank you for being here, everybody. It's a black to black to black. You are listening to black to black. Peace, everybody.